Okay, here's these two tractors side by side. 4,000 looks way bigger. That's because it's sitting way higher. Because like I said, that's why I bought the tractor. What's for the height difference? And these tractors are the exact same for certain key features. As far as your height is concerned, see how low that one sets to the ground. The rear draw bar is only about 12 inches off the ground. So when I'm driving over plants, they get over 12 inches, it starts hitting them. Whereas if I go up here to the 4,000, you can definitely see the front axles are different versus your wide front 4,000. Which, if you've ever seen some of these old tractors, they got what they call a tricycle tractor. This is actually a tricycle tractor that has had a wide front put on it. Which I know that they were a dealer item, probably even a factory installed item too. Plus there's a few aftermarket kits that ended up on some. But, as you can see the motor on the 4000 is identical to the motor on the 861. Now on these 861 tractors, some of them had a new engine block installed. You can tell by the C C0NN 61 or 6015J. Now if you know anything about forward part numbers, this is 1960, the C and the zero. The N is tractor. This is actually a 4000 engine block in this tractor. Ford put a balancer assembly into this tractor, and I will show that once I tear the other one apart. One other tidbit. The J, that's a 172 inch engine. So be sure you got that if you're looking for a 4000, or 800, or a 900. This tractor's power steering is out here on the tie rod, drag link, whatever you want to call it. And you have the nice big long radius rods. And there's one on either side, unlike the 4000, where there's just one. And see, this tractor has the remote hydraulics. It also has the regular rear rims. kind of hard to tell without comparing it side by side. There's the shorter fork on that. Aside from the fenders being a little different and the way the axle goes in. These tractors are pretty much identical in the rear. The reason the axles go in straight is because it's a utility tractor. You go over here to the 4000 row crop, you have these drop boxes. That's how they're able to achieve the rear and the tractor up in the air so much. So it's probably about an extra 10 inches of clearance right there. So you got a little different linkages here and there, but pretty much identical. Still a three point hitch, category one. Of course this one we have the PTO shifter down here right here instead of up on the hood like the selecto speed has and there's the five speed shifter and clutch now the 800 diesels were the 801s if you want to be particular had this square air box on them when i bought this tractor it had the same air box as the 4000 when they changed the engine block they put that filter on them because apparently they're more efficient. However, since this is correct for this tractor, I bought that and put it on there. I think it looks better. But this, this tractor I restored eight years ago. And it's a workhorse. I love it. If you're thinking about buying one of these and everything works, I say go for it. You'll love it. That was the reason for buying the 4000. Because like I say, it's a row crop, 
It's got the 172 diesel engine. I just ain't crazy about transmission. But these are great tractors. I highly recommend them. And once I get this guy here all redone, I'm sure I'll enjoy it just as much. And if you're wondering, yes, the blue on that tractor is correct. Ford changed them in 1963 to the blue and light gray, white, if you want to call it that, color scheme. And speaking of that, I haven't really found the exact color because you get you get varying uh, varying opinions on it. The later model tractors, like the 65s up, they are actually white. Right in there is kind of a grayish look, similar to the 861. So maybe we'll find the correct color when we sandblast. But that is the correct color scheme for this tractor. Just like the reddish orange and the gray is the same correct color for this tractor. A couple of extra items I wanted to talk about on this tractor because as I have shown, I've already worked on it a little bit. Kind of goes back to the what to look for aspect. Whoever had this tractor before me ran the crap out of it because it's leaking oil everywhere for one which I'm sure I'm gonna find a lot more crazy stuff as time goes on but some of the crazy stuff I have found on this tractor so far fuel lines had ball valves in them and I kind of explain a little bit about why someone would do that on a couple other videos I got in the works those are gone and the correct lines are installed. Of course, I mentioned the power steering cylinder missing. It was completely gone and this contraption was made onto it. I do have the bracket. It's not on there at the moment. The bracket that actually bolts right here where the hydraulic cylinder goes to. It's off from where I worked on the hydraulic pump. Uh, on the power steering like I say I have the pump it did not have a drive belt on it it did not have a lid on it hopefully it's not rusted and unrebuildable but we'll see when that gets to that point the lines for it were actually just looped and hooked together with a galvanized piece of pipe so who knows what they were doing there the seat on this tractor, it looks okay, but that's pretty broke. And I don't like these seats. I like this style. Our other tractor has one. I've already got one here for this tractor. So, I found this so far. Somebody's welded this. Hopefully I can repair this because these things are hard to find and very expensive when you do find them. There's actually supposed to be a piece right here that goes to this bolt to help hold this battery, which as you see it's not there. I'll either have to fabricate that or like I say replace the battery tray. I'm not sure yet what my route's gonna be. Got compression fittings everywhere. Leaking oil out of the engine. One other thing, if you do go check the tractor in person, check the oil level. But make sure that's not milky. If it's milky, you're gonna be lucky if you have a blown head gasket, but you might have a cracked head or worse, a cracked block. Which if you have either one of those scenarios, even if you have milk in there, if the tractor's in good shape, drop the price of the tractor. If it's in not good shape, walk away. Because you're gonna spend at least $1,000 for a new engine. And then you're probably still gonna have to turn around and rebuild it, which when I rebuilt my 861 eight years ago, I spent $1,700 to have the engine rebuilt. 
and that was with me assembling it that was just the machine work and the rebuild kit so keep that in mind and as I showed you I have to start my tractor with a clip lead because like most tractors that are old the wiring is a rat nest thankfully for these tractors Dennis Carpenter restorations makes every wire and harness you need for this tractor they're expensive but very high quality it's what I have on the H61 I absolutely love it and the selecto speed transmission has a switch that was up here to start it you know your normal tractors they're down here but somebody cut that all out put in a later model ignition switch which is not working very well which is where the clip leads come into effect but all that will be replaced made correct and work properly as far as back here stuff I've ran into so far the right arm has been replaced and has the sway chain eyelet installed here whereas the original on this side is hooked into the bolt like it should be right there now you can find some old of these arms if you want to be original or you can use the sway chain arms you can even take them and sway chain arms like this guy knock that bracket off install it correctly and no one will know I mean it's up to you now since this one has been replaced I'm OCD I'm gonna tell you that now so you'll see me do some crazy stuff in these videos this arm even though it's not bent or anything it is quite wore out so since this arm over here has been replaced and it's still pretty new and tight I bought a matching arm for it and I'll, let's see if you can see this yeah see the welds here on this draw bar bracket probably pretty common about every single one of these I've seen for replacement on eBay has been welded and there was something wrong with the one on the H61. I actually bought a replacement for it on eBay. So it's nice. And something else. Each of these drawbar brackets are tractor specific. The 7 and the 900 series might be the same, but I'm not sure. On your 800 this distance here to this bolt is larger than a 600 and on your 900 which the 900 is the same as the 4000 they have these little extra ears where the sway chain hooks to the 861 hooks right here so on the 900, they're way back here. So I can see, something I didn't mention, I'll probably edit it in, we'll see. The 100 series tractors, the 6, 7, 8, 9, the 501, 601, 701, 801, and 901, were the predecessors to these guys. Your 600 and your 700 are gonna be your 2000 counterpart your eight and your nine are your four thousand and that's just you know the size of the motors basically horsepower that they pretty much run the same transmission i think the 800 has a bigger ring and pinion in it than the 600 but i'm kind of thinking that this one has a 600 gear but something i did find out the other day because I'm changing the transmission then I actually have a 961 transmission the output shaft on it is a 10 spline 
on these thousand series there are multiple spline i'm not sure what the actual spline count is but they're a lot smaller so i'm gonna have to change the rear pinion gear which i'll go all over this further in de detail when i start specking out you know the selecto speed swap but on these row crop tractors since your motor is spinning clockwise or counterclockwise as we look at it right now if you was to bring your power back here and spin your ring gear which would be over here on a normal tractor this is going to spin forward since these got this rear gear top gear is going forward rear gear is going backwards so the tractor will go backwards all the time so because of that ring gear is actually on this side and your two main axles turn in reverse so that when you go over here your bottom gear will spin forward one other thing you want to check that's your draft control on this one they should actually have no play and by play I'm talking in the spring not this upper rocker that's kind of normal you know like I say for 50 60 year old tractor but there should be no play in this spring as you see here and for anyone who doesn't know that is how your draft control is and works yeah here's some more of the uh, rat nest wires along with a no little clip lead a little engineering here to hold the battery so these old track these old diesels had huge batteries in them you can buy the hold downs but finding the battery for them is a little hard so there's the key switch it's yeah, this should only be an on-off switch. Instead, it's like a three-position switch with a momentary. So it's incorrect. Which right now this does nothing, so it doesn't matter really which way it's on. That's kind of about all I've really found on it, as far as crazy, stupid stuff so far. I'm sure I'll probably find some more whenever I get into it. But, like I said, we'll get it tore down, take you along for the ride. Have us a nice tractor when we get done. But for now, it's time to put them back in the shed. And we'll start tearing this guy apart. And I'll walk you through every step. It's going to be sandblasted. I'm going to rebuild the engine. I'm probably going to change all four tires, like I say. We'll do all body work. We will rebuild the five speed with live PTO. That's where you get the six and the 861. If it's a 51, it's non life PTO, but same transmission. Which, if you're going with the 861 utility tractor, I highly recommend you get the live PTO because you'll absolutely love it. Especially if you're bush hogging, running a tiller, anything like that where you're going to be stopping and starting. Get the live PTO. But a couple years this tractor will be just as nice as the 861 behind me. Probably one of the last looks of this tractor like this next to this guy. <laughs>